In this module, so far we have seen how we can relate the velocity and acceleration of two points on the same rigid body. In other words, we have seen that if you are given a rigid body and if you know the velocity of any one point on the rigid body and if you know its angular velocity and angular acceleration, you can determine the velocity and acceleration of any other point on the rigid body. So just to do this again, if let's say I have a point A and I have a point B and I know the rate at which it is rotating as well as the rate at which its angular velocity is changing, which is angular acceleration, then I can write the velocity of any point by choosing another point as a reference point. So here we are choosing B to be the reference point plus omega cross R of A with respect to B. And this relationship can be applied as many times as you want. So if you want to write the velocity of point C, you can again choose B to be as your reference point plus omega. And omega, of course, is same because omega is a property of rigid body. So the angular velocity of the line joining B and C is same as the angular velocity of the line joining A and B. Cross R of C with respect to B. So if you know the velocity of one point and you know the angular velocity, you can determine the velocity of any other point. Similarly, we have seen we can also write acceleration equation. So acceleration of point A can be written as acceleration of point B plus omega cross omega cross this plus alpha cross R of A with respect to B. And we have also seen that this particular term can be simplified for a rigid body moving in a plane to minus omega square r of a with respect to b. So as much as possible, try to use this term uh, because there is no cross product involved in here. Okay, so this will save you uh, quite a bit of time in the exams as well as in quizzes. So when we did this analysis, essentially we attached a reference frame to the point b because p b was our point of reference, which was called a translating frame. So this frame was called translating frame and this was kind of implicit in this analysis. The reason it's called translating frame is because this frame is actually not allowed to change its orientation as the rigid body moves in the plane, okay? Now what happens when you have actually a motion of a particle on a rotating rigid body? So in this case, what we have done so far is we have assumed that point N A and point B do not move relative to each other. The distance between the two points remains same. But if you were to encounter a situation where the distance between point A and B was changing, now that is not to say that we are going to admit the deformable bodies, okay? So we are not saying that the distance between the two points on the same rigid body is changing. What we are saying is that maybe on a rigid body, there is another body that is actually moving related to original body. So for example, if you have a scenario like this, where let's say I have a slot cut in this body, okay? So I have one body and I have a slot cut in here and there is a pin inside this slot, okay? So if you attach your reference frame, let's say here, and this rigid body is, is uh, rotating at some angular velocity omega, at the same time, the slot is also rotating, going to be, is going to be rotating with the same angular velocity, but this pin over here is allowed to slide with some relative velocity inside our bigger rigid body over here, okay? So if you look at this problem, and you try to relate the velocity of, let's say, the origin of this frame with the, with the velocity of the pin over here, let's call it P, let's call this point, you know, this is called O, then clearly the distance between P and O is changing, right? This distance is changing as P moves. So this is a case where you have relative motion between the two rigid bodies, while one of them is actually rotating. So this kind of scenario is seen in a lot of cases. So for, take, for example, um, a centrifugal pump. So inside centrifugal pump, you have the veins, and if you have fluid particles that travel over the veins, then the fluid particles are experiencing the motion due to the rotation of the pump. At the same time, they are sliding with respect to the veins. Another example would be, let's say we have a fan, all right? And on this fan, somewhere there is a bug, all right? And this fan is actually, this fan is actually supposed to rotate with some angular velocity. It could also have some angular acceleration. 
And this bug, when this fan rotates, actually begins to move on the blade with some velocity. Then in that case, this is the case where there is some sliding happening on a rotating rigid body. So if you look at the motion of the bug with respect to the center of this fan, then clearly the distance between these two points, let's say this point is O, this point is P, is changing as the bug moves on the fan's blade. So in this situation, you can't apply any of these equations. The reason being the distance between O and P R is actually changing. Now you will recall that we derived these relationship when we wrote the position vector of A with respect to position vector of B and then we also wrote the position vector of A with respect to B. So this was written as R B plus R of A with respect to B and this in turn was written as R U R hat where r was the distance between a and b and u r hat was a unit vector along that direction. And when we took the derivative, we said that r was actually constant. So we only had the derivative of the unit vector, which was nothing but the angular velocity of this unit vector cross the vector itself. Right Now in this case, you can clearly see that since r is changing, these two relationships would not apply. So what kind of relationship would apply in this case? Well, it turns out that for problems like these where there is sliding happening on a rotating rigid body, and in fact, this would become the test for figuring out when to use these equations that we have here or a different set of equations, then we have to actually expand our analysis to accommodate this relative motion between the two points.